Welcome back to part two of the Festival of Lights in the God is in the House. And uh, yes, the Festival of Lights and Jesus is the light and we need to follow Yeshua, HaMashiach. Yes, um, so I left you with Isaiah chapter 60 and we're going to go back into Isaiah chapter 60. And uh, thank you for... Uh, tuning back in or going to watch this at another time. But bless you all. We, we really, really do thank you. And, and we thank you for your precious prayers and, and for the provision that you're sending in during this uh, December and, and the new year. Our plans are to help as many as we can. Uh, you know, we have some, you know, we have some specific things that we want to help in, in India and also hopefully Pakistan and uh, some local things, but also um, yeah, hi Ralph, how you doing? Reverend uh, R-R-I-T, Reverend I-T, <laughs> yeah, he's our, uh, he's our it man, he, he knows I-T very well. So, oh, Marie Thompson, well, thank you, bless you, cousin, cousin, popping in from Brandon. But truth is light, and we need the Father, you know, in John 4 verses you know, 20 to 22, the Father seeks those who worship in spirit and in truth. Those who worship in the spirit of the living God and in the light and the truth of the spirit of truth and light coming from their hearts, coming from the altar of God on your hearts, not the altar of man. Isn't that cool? So let's get into this. Let's get into this. So thank you again for your provision. Uh, for those that have been helping and providing for all so many years, thank you, thank you, thank you. And some are so faithfully, they send like, you know, 20, 25 bucks a month and just continue to send it in, sometimes more. Uh, but there's always that 25, so thank you for that. And uh, then there's some that tithe and others give out offerings because they go to other churches and, and tithe into that church was so important. You know, uh, the enemy really wants you to, to come into a place of offense or whatever it may be, or fear, and to stop giving unto the Lord because you're angry at him, so you're going to stop giving. Uh-oh, that's at the altar of man, 666. You better repent of that one. And um, it's the widow's might that impressed all heaven and all light when the widow put the might in. So bless you in your might, your mighty, mighty, mighty alms, helping the poor, your mighty, mighty offerings, helping the body of Christ in every area around the world, and your tithe that goes into the storehouse as well. So where you're getting fed and where you're in fellowship, that's a good thing. So that's a lot of light to share with you right now with a might and a light and be tight with God. Eh? I could probably come up with a song, but yeah. All right, Isaiah chapter 60. Arise and shine, for the light has come. Yeah, I, I really went deep into that on the first part of this. So we're going to go through some scriptures, and I pray during this this time that more light you'll... It says in Psalm 36, verses 8 to 10, there's some really good things in there. You know, It says, come and drink from my river of delights. I wonder how much light is in that river of delights. I wonder how much, how much you're soaking in the river of delights that brings so much light into you. Mmm, I bet you it tastes pretty good too. And you are work, worried about your calories, I bet you it's light. <laughs> Don't worry about the calories, just drink a lot of it. Uh, and it says, uh, there, there's a fountain, a fountain of life. That you can come and drink. That's like the tree of drink from the fountain of life. Eat of the tree of life. Do not go to a stagnant uh, slew hole and drink, or drink, eat from the tree of good and evil. Are some of you eating from the tree of knowledge? Hope you don't get slivers in your mouth of good and evil, because if it, some of it's good. But it says evil, so if there's evil, that means that it's an equivocation in the sense that 
you can't be mostly right. You've got to be all right. Okay. And then it says, come stand in the light to receive more light. And when we're standing in the light, we all become the all-consuming fire and we become more light together in the ecclesia and the body of Christ. So Psalm 36, 8, 9, and 10 is a good, good one. So let's go here. Here in, um, you know, I've got this kind of set up to, uh, again, I'll read, arise and shine and light. Be enlightened. Be enlightened. I'm reading out of the exegesis. And it says, for the light has come. And the and the glory and the honor of the Lord Yahweh is risen upon thee. Hmm. It's, you know, there's a time when we know that Jesus came into this world and he brought the light. He, the light was birthed. And the light from heaven came and kissed the sun of light and the sons of light to be as we come into that place of repentance under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit comes and resides in us as light, in the sons of light, no longer the children of pride. Take that one to the bank. <laughs> Verse 2 it says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and it says, Gross drippings of darkness and the people of the nation. Well, wow, that's that's pretty descriptive. But the Lord Yahweh shall rise upon thee, and his glory and honor shall be seen upon thee. Even upon all this gross stuff, there's going to be a repentance and there's going to be a restoration through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and the light, and then we be become part of the light. We're no longer part of the whatever you want to call that miry clay that it was talking about. Uh, that's pretty ugly stuff, but it becomes light. That's what it says here in Isaiah, kind of prophesying that. Remember what we were talking about in the last two or three weeks? That voice, the voice of God crying out of the wilderness. Isaiah cried that. John the Baptist cried that. Jesus, in the red letters, said that. And he says, I am the fulfillment of this, then they wanted the sons, the 666 the, on the altar of their hearts of man, wanted to stone Jesus because he must be Beelzebub to say that. He can't be the son of God. And he was. There's, most of them were starting to get it after 2,000 years. Well, how about that? And guess what? We are supposed to say that as sons of light. We are supposed to be the voices crying in the wilderness and speaking light and taking out the darkness and all that, that other cruddy stuff for people to become into the light and leave the children of pride out of the slums, of the sloughs, of the swamps that we all crawled out of because there's glory and grace. Wow, Isaiah. Yeah, chapter 3, uh, chapter 60, verse 3. And it says, honor will become uh, on us. And it says, and the Gentiles and the Goyim, Goyim, Gentiles, the Goyim. I mean, Goyim means pig. Unclean. Hmm. And the Gentile, the Goyim, shall become, shall come to thy light. Yeah, okay. All right, I got it. All those who are unclean are going to become clean and come to the light. Isaiah is prophesying that. And it also says the kings and the sovereign nations will as well. We're kings, we're kings and holy priesthood, so that's kind of cool. And it says, into the brightness and the brilliance of thy rising. Wow. It says, out of the brilliance and the rising, uh, uh, lift up. Lift up thy, thine eyes round about and see. All they, my, Dougie's down here saying, wants to get some attention, you know. And, and he's saying, all, all they gather themselves together and they come to thee. The sons shall come from far. So the sons are coming and will continue to come. So that's, that's so cool. And then it says, 
and they and they gather themselves as they come to thee thy sons shall come from afar and thy daughters shall be nurtured and nursed at thy side hmm. Hmm. El Shaddai <laughs> you can look that one out a lot of people can't handle it because this is thy all breasted one how can God have breasts he's God he's, he's sovereign anyway don't want to get off track so when you read through that that's the, the that's the uh, exegete, exegete Jesus and uh, out of the King James it says in verse 4 lift up thy eyes around and see they all gather and and they come to you your sons shall shall come from afar and your daughter shall be nursed at your side then you shall see and become radiant there's the light okay so when we come to that place and be nursed by God you know into that you know we, we're nursed through um, his nourishment then we become radiant so it's good to be nursed by the tree of life not by the tree of good and evil because only that it brings death and you won't be radiant you'll be kind of wood chips anyway and then it says and then your heart shall swell with joy when you become radiant your heart shall swell with joy because there's happiness and joy and when you know who you are as a son and daughter of the most high and then it says because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you it says and the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you remember in genesis 1 where god he says, and the sea shall be abundance to you. All creation shall be abundance unto you. Wow. And the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. And it says, well, okay. And then, then you can just come down. Let's just start here in, uh, in verse 10. And it says, the sons of the foreigners shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister to you. Wow. For in my wrath I struck you by, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. That's in verse 10. So those are the arrows. You know, in my wrath I have struck you with one of my arrows to get your attention, like Jesus did to the Pharisees when he wrote in the sand. Do you think he offended their minds to heal their heart? How many times has he done that to you? I know he's done it to me quite a bit. Oh, Dougie, 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 Dougie. Oh, he wants to go out. Well, let's do this. Come with me. Ah, uh, yes. Come with me. Leslie is lying down sleeping. So let's go for a walkabout. Okay. So, over here, we've set up the lights. I'll show it to you later another time, all the lights that we've got set up around here. They're not on yet, but they will be soon. But Dougie wants to go outside. Okay, Dougie. Are you gonna go outside? Where you go? Nope. You see what he's doing? He brought me to the door because he knows if I bark and do this and come to the door, Dawn is gonna laugh right now. He says, I'm trying to get your attention because I want some love. And he's saying right there, oh, he wants cookies. You want a cookie, Dougie? Sit. Sit. Okay. Everybody's watching. All right. Got a cookie. Sit. Up. Oh, look at that. He responded to some love and he responded to cookies. I wonder what God is doing in our lives to send down love and food and up. Want some cookies? There you go. I'm going to be smart and bring the cookies over here. Generally, uh, <laughs> there's others when we do our God is in the house and uh, are feeding Dougie cookies during these times. But I can't be cameraman and everything else right now. <laughs> but I do have, how many, how many are laughing out there? Sorry for that segue. But sometimes we just need cookies to get on track. And that, for us right now, is just the Word of God. 
<laughs> it's a nice thing to eat. Okay. Well, as the that was easy. How easy it is to <laughs> stop the barking. All right. I wonder. Hmm, I wonder if we're barking at things that we need to maybe turn our focus into the light. That's a good illustrative sermon. Another day. So in verse ten, it's talking about. It's talking about a, the, the sons of foreigners shall build up your walls. Isn't that interesting? And, the, and it says, their king shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. Therefore your gates shall be open continually, and they shall not be shut day or night. Do you think that has anything with Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 3? The light of day shall not be shut. And it's also saying that the foreigners, the children of pride, the, uh, it says the wealth of the wicked are stored up for the beloved. It says that they're going to look after us. So no, don't worry. That's, it's kind of, it says that. I just wanted to bring that in. God, God has a way of providing, even through other means that we don't understand. So trust him and don't doubt his provision or direction. Then let's go to verse 18. Okay, now uh, this is kind of speaking to what we are at right now in all the lands around the world pretty much. And uh, 18 says, violence shall no longer be heard in your land. Wow. Isn't that something we are going to be excited about? Violence shall no longer be heard in your land. Now, uh, about a month, six weeks ago, I, I spoke on uh, Proverbs 18.10, and uh, I wanted to speak about that right now. And it says, <clears throat> you know, I haven't got, is, in the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous shall run into it and shall be safe. Now, in the Hebrew, it's kind of it's kind of cool again. Um, and, it, and it says, and the name of of the Lord, which is Oz, O-Z, O-Z. And the name of the Lord, Oz, is strong tower. And the righteous shall run into it and shall be, what? It says safe, shall be put in a place where the calamity of this world is not going to touch you. The disease of this world is not going to touch you. And, they, and, it's, and it says, they shall, and, and they shall be safe. They shall be in a place of safety. That strong tower, Oz. So it, that Oz also means in Hebrew, Migdal. M-I-G-D-E-D-A-L. Migdal, Oz. And which means strength, uh, which also mean, means um, material. It means social strength. It means physical strength. It means political strength. It is a fortress and a strong tower. Hmm. And your goal is to run the race and he, the God uh, Oz, you know, not the place of Oz, you know, Dorothy or whatever, but O said Oz, the strong tower, you shall run into his safety and be free of destruction. Are you caught up in social media and getting involved with the destruction and cursing and doing throwing stones and doing different things? Hmm, I would say, stop it. <laughs> Just pray for others is a good is a better go into a place of prayer and repentance. And when you take communion next time, repent for the times you've been cursing others or cursing yourself. Or, or, or come into that place of forgiveness for those that you just cannot forgive. That's causing real difficulties in you. And you think the other people are the problem. And God is throwing a dart or an arrow right to your heart to he, for you to change, not them. That's what fasting is all about. So they can be changing you. God's sovereign. He doesn't need to change. God's sovereign. He doesn't have to change the things around you. He's only worried about you. That 
you would change. Good things around here. And always enter into his light and stay in his light. He didn't make you for the night or the darkness. That's your choice. Hmm. Because you're the light. Jesus is the light. He's the light of God who took away the sins of the world. And then he wanted to put that light in his sons and multiply the Holy Spirit. <sighs> Not to be murmurs and, murmurs and complainers walking through the desert like the children of Israel who are angry at God and murmuring and complain and they're rebellious. Is that happening right now in the body of Christ? Well, I'm going to say in those that the religious spirit is stirring up and you're listening to the religious spirit, listen to our podcast two weeks ago. We addressed that. Anyway, so Migdal means it's a very strong fortress. And so the Lord is going to raise you up above the destruction. Is there destruction out there? Chaos? Calamity? He's going to raise you up above it. Light. When you look up at the sky and it's blue right now, how close is that sky to your nose? Are you breathing Adonai Elohim? Is he omnipresent? Hmm. How close is he on the outside? How close is he on the inside? <laughs> Do you realize that? Hmm. So, Oz, you run into this, that strong tower. You run into his strength, not the strength of man, 666. It's not going to get you anywhere on that altar of destruction and calamity. Run into his strength. And the word in Hebrew is as far as that when you're safe in the tower away from the destruction is called S-A-G-A-B. Sagab. You are a Sagab. I am out of the destruction. I am in the bubble of Sagab. In the hand of God, totally separated, set apart from all that destruction and mayhem and violence in the world, of the kingdom of this world. And I am in the Sagab, the hand of God, of pure safety and light. <laughs> Your safe place from destruction is in the tower and the hand of God. And if you're running into the land of Oz, of man, it didn't work out very well. Too much destruction and confusion and false prophets, false teachers, false everything down there. <clears throat> and those false prophets are like the tin man, no heart, straw man, no brain, and the lion, maybe I got no courage. God is unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness, and unmeasured acceptance. And the wisdom of God pours through to you in God's eyes, in his strong tower. Don't be sucked into the other one by any vortex of any wind of the enemy, tornado, otherwise. Do not fear. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. And as by his arrows, he's shooting them and he wants you to take up the bow in the art of war, worship of war, and start shooting the arrows that I talked about in Psalm 127.4. The arrows are in the hand of the warrior and we are the warriors of the Golden Calf. Psalm 38.2, and it says, Yes, the arrows pierce me deeply. In other words, that's Jesus. You know, you can look at that. Uh, David said, and your arrows pierce me deeply. David wasn't spared by any arrow of God that needed to sh shoot him in the heart and bring him around right. So in Psalm 38 too, there's an arrow for you if you haven't got things right because God wants to keep you in the light of day. At that time, D David was operating in some nighttime antics or whatever it may be. So as the arrow came in and it what pierced him, his pierced him deeply. If you're being pierced, praise God. Thank you, God. Let your piercing enter you into the promise 
and the prepare ye the way of the promises of what God has in your life. Out of the wilderness, into the promised day of the light of day every day. Because the wilderness, you know, it might be shadows or darkness or night of day. But the light of day is where we need to be right now, beloved. 24-7. Yeah, we can sleep in, but the light will continue to come forth. Okay, I think you got that one. So, and it, then it says, uh, in, in uh, reading it out of the King, New King James, violence shall no longer be heard in your land, neither wasting nor destruction within your borders. Hallelujah. You got to be in Oz. You got to be in God's strong tower. If you're trying to get into man's, you're going to get a headache. I'm just saying, it's, tree of knowledge and good and evil isn't going to do it. And you, and it, and it says, but you shall be called, and it says, but you shall call your wall salvation. When you're in the land of Oz, God's hand, you will call the wall salvation, which is salvation is Yeshua, salvation around you. Salvation is around you. So the walls have to be, come up. And it says, your gates praise. In other words, your gateway, the entrance way, is the Lion of Judah, the warrior of worship, sending out the roar of God that the enemy can't stand. <laughs> Come on, you little cubs. Start roaring like lions. Some people say, Ray, Leslie, we can't handle you because you're too radical. Well, radical amazement is the Lion of Judah coming out of the inside of us, scaring and pushing the enemy back. And sometimes people take it the wrong way and saying, oh, maybe I'm being offended because I feel like I, I feel this fear that's coming out. No, it should, it should be an awe of God. If you're fearing the fear of man, uh-uh, the awe of God. His gates. And worship is the awe of God that we fall down before him and worship him in spirit and in truth. Whether we're in the inside of the walls or outside, it doesn't matter where the presence of God is, but if we're in the inside, it allows us to grow and be nurtured by him. You understand? You've got to be nurtured into a place of maturity. You're not going to do it in the wilderness. You need to come into God's house. You've got to be in the house. And you've got to put him in there light and keep cutting off anything that would want to switch on flame on darkness out your choice on a switch wow okay so your gaze praise and then verse 19 it says in the new king james it says god and the glory of his people god and the glory of his people are you know, that's the righteousness of God and the glory. Thou shall be called walls of salvation and thy gates, and it calls it portals of halal in the in, in next to Jesus here. The praise are the portals of halal, the worship that comes out of the voice of God, which is your voice speaking the halals of worship where the Father seeks worship in spirit and in truth. Got it? John 4, 20, 22 there. So that's the portals of halal. And the sun, S-U-N, the sun sh shall be no more the light of day, neither for the brilliance or the brightness shall, and, it's, and it says, shall the moon uh, give light unto the lightened of thee, but the Lord Yahweh shall be unto thee, and everlasting eternal life. In other words, you have to turn the S-U-N, S-U-N into the S-O-N. There's a paradigm shift. I hear, I, fear, I hear some brains and wheels creaking and crashing there. Yeah. Ah, there's uh, high comfort. 
from Nigeria. Bless you. I know we haven't hooked up, but the last week has been very difficult, the last week or two. And uh, I haven't talked to Manny, but I will talk to you soon. Comfort. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I just, it's been tough the last two weeks. I've only been speaking to very few people. But I'll talk to you soon. Continue to pray for me. There are intercessors for us. Love you very much. <clears throat> Lord has had me gripped tightly in his hand in Sagab. Wesley and I have been in his hand at Sagab, that mighty safe, that mighty tower, keeping us safe during some very time, difficult times for us. I don't know if any of you picked up on that. <clears throat> but we pray for you, that you will be in Sagab, in the mighty hand and protection of God as well, and for provision as well, and grace, yes. <clears throat> so verse, and it says here, uh, you know, the moon is always a reflection of what God's light comes from, the natural in the S-U-N. But can you see the S-O-N, how his reflection is everywhere, even in the night? <laughs> kind of bold, you boldly stand out. Uh, oh, Reginald, ah, oh, bless you. You know, uh, I think you're from Germany. Uh, sometimes I, I, I look, uh, Reginald, uh, and uh, um, I, I, you're... You, you, you handle uh, the Israeli messianic site and bless you for that and all the darts that, that man is probably shooting at you. But bless you for your stand in the light, uh, Reginald. Love you very much for what you do and what you stand for and what you speak. Bless you, bless you, bless you, Reginald. From Germany and Israel. Bless you. Okay. Verse 20, and, this, and it says, The sun shall be no more and go down. And it says, Yahweh shall be the eternal light. And in those days of thy mourning, in other mourning and, gr and grieving, uh, that shall end, and, and you shall come to a place of peace. So get out of the S-U-N and get into the S-O-N and the eternal light, and then you will come into the place of shalom and uh, of eternal peace. Wow. That was easy. That was easy. Hope you got that one. In verse 21, it says, and then, and then it says, the people also shall be all righteous. Okay, the, there, there's that separation. The people, the, the body of Christ, the remnant, shall all be righteous and just, and they, and they shall inherit and be the successor of the land forever. And it, do, you, do you know that we're being raised up to be kings? Well, we are kings and priests. But it says that, you know, uh, during the next thousand years that we're going to reign over and be kings over what's that all about well I'm, I'm i'm stretching you right now it's about this god's preparing us to rule for a thousand years with him over all those who maybe didn't get it the first time i hope you get it the first time anyway that's my thinking you can challenge it if you like but anyway that's what i believe <clears throat> so that's Isaiah 61 and verse 21 it says also the people shall shall be righteous we've been talking about that for the last Thursday and now we need to be righteous and have pure hands pure heart and they shall inherit the land forever forever well that's out of the new King James but out of the ex exegesis and it says they shall be successors well, if we're going to we're going to be successors. Success successor means there has to be a death and a change and an inheritance. Blowing your mind? Yes, an inheritance, a successor that we will be as kings and priests and prophets. You can read uh, Revelations uh, twenty one nineteen. Jesus was the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy. Some of us walk in the office of the prophet, but. We are to speak prophetically right now the light of God through us. 
and, and be successors of the land forever, eternally. And then it says, the branch of my planting and the work of my hands that I may be glorified and adorned. In other words, God is planting this and planting us that he would be glorified through this. We as the sons and daughters of the Most High. So there's no mistake. Don't worry about this, all this calamity and everything else. God has a plan and a purpose. For us, Jeremiah 29, 11, it's his plan, his purpose, not ours. All this other stuff. He, as Oz, as we run into the strong tower, God is Oz, and the Sagap, in other words, his mighty hand of strength that lifts us out of the destruction of this world, that we will not be hurt, or we just need to trust and obey. And he says, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, and that I may be glorified, adorned, and it says, a little one shall become a thousand. A little one shall become a thousand. Wow, that's of the exegesis. And a small one, a strong nation, like a mighty goyim. In other words, an unclean will become clean and be a mighty nation. So, uh, and, and when you when you read that in, in the New King James, it says, they shall inherit forever and the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand and a small one, a strong nation. And I, the Lord, will hasten. I, the Lord, will hasten. What? It. In its time. The time and season. I will do this in the time and the season when it has come to place. Those who are Trust and obey. But it says here in, in, in the exegesis, and the small one, a strong nation, and a little, and a strong nation, which is a, a mighty goyim, and the Lord Yahweh shall hasten it, I shall bring it into being in its time, like he has spoken everything else when I talked about in Genesis. Oh my. Oh my. So let's go to John. Let's go to John chapter uh, chapter 10, okay? Let's go to John chapter 10. I always have more to give than, uh, I had a thing in there, but sorry, John chapter 10. I think it's important for us to stick with the basics here, eh? On some of these things. John chapter 10, um, this is again talking about the festival of lights. And we're going to go chapter 10, 22 to 24, maybe a little more. But this is the time that we're in right now. You know, when I say the time that we're in right now, Kislev is, is, is the festival of lights. And John chapter 10, verses 22 to 24, is the same time as heaven is and on earth right now. So what is heaven speaking right now based on John chapter 10? 10, 22, uh, and we'll go right down to 30, but uh, let, let's, it's important to know how the voice of God is speaking to us right now. His voice, his words, his light. Okay, so verse 22 out of, it, it's, 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 and it says Yeshua, the Messiah. Okay, and it, it was, and it was and became at Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, the feast of Hanukkah, or dedication, or of lights. And it was winter, in other words, the season of winter. Ooh. And there and there was a downpour. And Jesus Yeshua walked into the temple. The, uh, he walked into the temple. A, the priest, he walked in as a holy priest, and then he... And he spoke in Solomon's porch. And then he came to the Jews. So let me read it out of New King James. Uh, chapter 10, 22. Now, as the Feast of Dedication, or the Festival of Lights, or in Jerusalem, and it was winter, and Jesus walked in the temple of Solomon's porch, then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, 
How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. In other words, they're trying to trap him, okay? You know, they're trying, the religious spirit is out, like right now, the religious spirit is trying to trap you. Just like all the churches being shut down and being fined for gathering or whatever it may be. How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them, I told you, this is in the red letters, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You go to our website, Resurrection Life, every, for the last 30 years, this, you know, people always ask, you know, what denomination are you? What, you know, what's your religion? Whatever. I, I say, well, follow Jesus, and we're about the Father's business. Two different scriptures in covenant. So we follow Jesus. We follow Yeshua HaMashiach because we know his voice, and we're about the Father, Adonai Elohim, his business, the, advancing the kingdom of God here until he comes, releases his son. And we do it in the power and the authority given to us on high through the Holy Spirit within us. Knowing, Philippians 3.10, that we know Him. We know Yeshua HaMashiach. We know Him in the power of His resurrection. We know Him in the power of His resurrection. And we know Him in His unconditional love. We know Him in the love. We know Him. We know him in the power and in the love. And it says the fellowship of his suffering, in the fellowship of covenant. We know him in that covenant. Well, what is that covenant? It's Passover, the shedding of blood. We know him for the remission of sins. We know him. He knows us. And we love. Billy Graham said, just changing postal codes from the kingdom of this world to the kingdom of heaven. No big deal. That was easy. Because we're already seated in the heavenly places. Remember that scripture? So walk in the power of resurrection life. Continue to fellowship in the suffering of the communion. Well, in the Passover of the shedding of blood and the power that's in the blood. Behold the Lamb of God comes to take away the sin of the world. I did not come to condemn the world, but to bring it life and life abundantly through himself and the sons and daughters of the Most High. The greatest harvest that will ever be is now. Mm. So, and then, then it says here, <coughs> And, and in my sheep, as they said to my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I gave them eternal life. I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Never perish. Hmm, never perish. John chapter eleven twenty five. 25. I am the resurrection and life. He that believes in me shall not die. Do you believe this? Do you doubt this? spirit of timidity, but I have given you the Holy Spirit of reverent awe and fear of me, so that you would walk in the power of resurrection life, Yeshua HaMashiach, and in love, the unconditional love of the Father that God gave the Son, and have the sound mind to bring everything together through the Holy Spirit, so that you would not come into a place of what? Of throwing stones at your brother. of bringing separation in the body of Christ, of cursing yourself, cursing someone else, 
like I talked about in the last segment. Festival of Lights is late all the time. You do have you do not have the right to hold a grudge or an offense. Release it. Forgive. It's the Father's forgiving you. You don't have the right to be on the altar of 666 of the man of God, or of man, what am I saying? Uh, of man's, man's altar. And say, I'm justified to hold my grudge and my anger. And others support me in that too. And all this different sin, like in Lot, or in the days of Noah, or all that debauchery. So why can't I hold my anger or my prejudice or whatever it may be against no not on the altar of God you cannot do it because it's pure and righteous holy hands of God have no rights only obedience and to trust in the light that's in you forever and ever Okay, so let me finish this. So I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any one of them be snatched out of my hand. Hmm. Does that come back to Sagab? The safety of the strong tower? I'm in the hand of God. I'm, you know, but this is Jesus speaking. But God, the Father God also spoke this too. No one's going to snatch his beloved out of his hand. Do you believe this? I believe this. Don't worry about all this other stuff. Run into his strong tower. And be raised up above the destruction of what's happening in the world right now. And be in the place of dedication. Be on the place of your knees. Dedicate and be on your place of your knees in the center of the walls of salvation around you. And the glory of the praise of God coming out of the gates. And be nurtured in his love to become into a place of maturity. So you can stand in authority to go against the enemy. So you don't to be crushed by the glory of God because of your own misgivings. And your own thoughts and saying whatever it is about your brother. Struggle. And it says verse 20, my father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. So what do you believe? That's all in the red print. Yeshua he is speaking this through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I and my Father are one. This is the year Hebraic calendar of 5781. One. We're going into 2021. One in 30 days. Which hand are you going to be in? Tree of good and evil? Knowledge? Government? Trust them? Believe in them? a cop protecting his strength his strong tower will always God will always be there oh man a lot of prophetic stuff happening here I'm just, um, you know in the exegesis in 27 it says my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life. Pretty straightforward. I love the way the light's coming through this west window of ours right now, right into my eyes. I hope you can see the light of his shining and of his glory upon me. His servant called to speak. Maybe some fiery darts at times. To offend your mind, to heal your heart. You want to take... Take it, please take it and receive it. And when next time you take communion, don't, don't curse your brother. Forgive the offenses. And if I have offended you, you get a hold of me. I want to know. In 30 years, I've probably done some stupid things wrong. And I've, I've asked God for forgiveness and whatever it may be, but maybe I haven't said it to you personally. So let me know. Or maybe you've taken me wrong and... and based on something we've taught and say, finally, God gave you the revelation and understanding. 
Because in Ephesians chapter 1, verses, you can read it in there. I'm going to give you the spirit of revelation, and I'm going to give you the spirit of wisdom in this particular time so you can see things through my eyes and my heart. So I hope you can see myself and Leslie through that and if we have hurt you because we have spoken the word of truth I ask the Lord to bring that revelation to you and that you make things right with God and if we have done something that's wrong let us know so we can repent I have a repentant heart I don't want to hurt anybody I only want to go against the enemies of God and that's not the flesh of man, that's the demon or whatever the influence of that enemy is, once you get to know, know him. Raymond means kingly warrior. God called me that. My parents called me. They didn't have a clue what it meant. But I raised to the call that God has called my sons and Leslie to do against many evil things in this world. And we stand firm. And we stand firm for you to protect you in the gap as well might not understand it but we do sometimes when you correct your children they don't understand it either until they reach the age of 30 that's when their brain can kind of goes oh i finally got what you said you were doing dad hmm. interesting if you haven't been there yet you will understand last i got i got to end on this last one in revelations in Revelations uh, chapter 21, verses 22 to 27, it, it's very explicit here saying the Lamb of God is the lamp, the light. So, um, in this festival of lights, um, what this says here is so profound in chapter uh, 21 of Revelations. Okay, I think I got it right here. Yeah, verses 22 to 27. And, and, it's, and it's called uh, the New Yerush Jerusalem, the New Jerusalem. And it says, And I saw no temple within. For the Lord God Almighty, Yahweh El Sabaoth, And the Lamb and the Lamb are the temple of it. I'm reading out of the exegesis. And the city had no need of the sun, S-U-N. It says the New Jerusalem has no need of the S-U-N. Remember chapter 1? And I call the light of day. S-O-N, the light of day. Yeshua is the day. This is the day of day. Yeshua has no need. Let us rejoice in light. And the lamb, and he says, the lamb and the temple are of it. And it's in verse 23, it says, and the city had no need of the S-U-N, the sun, neither of the moon to shine or manifest any more in it. For the glory of the Lord did lighten Elohim, lightened it. <laughs> the glory of the Lord, the Son of God has lightened the new Jerusalem. And we are the light that's all part of it too. Our city of lights, the festival of lights, the city of lights is our eternal destination. And the Lamb is the light. Verse 23, and it says, The Lamb is the light, the candle, the menorah. Therefore, and all the nations of Goyim, of all the nations of them which are saved, shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of this world and the sovereignties of this world will bring the glory and honor into and the gates of it and shall not in no way be shut at all by day in the light of day and shall be no night there anymore. 
from Genesis to the Revelations. God separated the light and the day and they called it this morning. And in the Jerusalem, the night is taken out. And it's the day of light and the light and the menorah and glass and the glory. And Just like the altar of God, it says to the whole priesthood and Levite, just do not let the light go out. And if the light has gone out on your altar or your heart, repent and say, God, put the light back there. Don't let man do it. I don't want no strange fire. I only want the light and the fire of God to come and consume me. Let me read it out of the King James. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Adonai Elohim. And Yeshua HaMashiach are its temple. Jerusalem, the light, I think, Holy Spirit, wrought in it. And the city had no need of the sun. Or the moon to shine in it. There needs to be no more reflection of the, of the sun in the night anymore. S-U-N shining on the moon at night so there would be light in the darkness. Well, Jesus is the light in the darkness in us in the evening and with us in the day of light. It never goes out. The enemy knows that. You don't. I hope you do now. And it says... The glory, and it says, the glory of the Lord illuminated it. Illuminated the, it. And the Lamb, and the Lamb, Yeshua HaMashiach, takes away the sins of the world. It's the illumination of the light. It says, the Lamb is its light. The Jerusalem. There is no darkness. And it says, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. And the kings of the earth shall their glory and honor into it. In other words, out of the Hebrew and Greek I, I read, they bring, they bow down to their knees. All the sovereignty of all the different nations bow down to, like King Nebuchadnezzar did. They bow down. They repent. This is the time we're in right now. Greatest harvest in all the nations and all the people of all the world. Its gate shall not be shut at all by the day, because there is no more night. <laughs> the gates will be continuous praise, worship for all eternity, because there is no night, and the gates will not. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. All nations. But there shall be by no means enter it anything that defiles, anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie but only those whose names who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Do not compromise the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. Do not bring spiritual aids into the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach and say we can justify our action because we are LBGQ. Or we got this so we can justify our anger because of that genocide or that nation or that anger. No. Total forgiveness, total purity on the altar of God in his fire, not man's strange fire that justifies other actions that they can say, in my flesh I can justify this because I have rights. On God's altar, you have no rights. Only the righteousness of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that allows you to enter in. I bless you, do I bless you in the name of Jesus. Will I make his face shine upon you? Jesus is coming for all of 
mercy. Be gracious to you. Lord, have mercy upon you as you will on others. And let the light light every morning shine upon your face of the light of day and stay in the light. Receive more light. Don't stray away because of curses of heart issues or repent for times of refreshing are near and be restored in all things. Time is short. Do not let the wind of God separate you from the grain to be chaff. You need to come into the storehouse and the grain needs to go on the altar and to be crushed and to be soaked in the anointing oil of God and the new wine and God's heart is going to come down and consume us as a holy sacrifice and offering unto him. That Philippians 3.10 that you may know Yeshua Mashiach that you may know him in the resurrection the life and the power that you may know him you may know him in the sacrifice that's the word and that we will live out our lives until our resurrection when until our death let it all die Jesus said I am the resurrection and the life who believe in me shall not die. Do you believe this? The Lord then said, The peace of God be upon you in every name that I am, that the I am is, is in you and in me now and forevermore. We'll see you next week. Bless you.